Branches of Hope, The 9-11 Survivor Tree by Anne McGee, illustrated by Nicole Wong. So if I look on the side here, the summary says, the branches of the 9-11 Survivor Tree poke through the rubble at ground zero. Glimpses of hope in the weeks after September 11th, 2001. Let's read the story now. Bright sun streamed down onto busy New York City streets. The tree basked in warmth. So you see this tree, all the people just living their life around the tree, walking, playing with their pets, until something unthinkable happened. The sky roared and exploded. Fire rained down, down, down. Sidewalks rumbled, buildings crumbled. So the family is in their apartment watching in horror what was happening on the TV as they watched the buildings burn and fall to the ground. Great black clouds billowed all around the tree. Silence. Then sirens wailed. Time passed slowly. Buried in darkness, the tree reached up, longing for the light. So with all that death and destruction, this little tree was poking out. Weeks later, a rescue worker spotted something green among the ashes, a sign of ongoing life. So as the firefighters were working, we see the family in their apartment again. The tree dug its roots deep into the rich soil again. Burned bark like scars covered the tree. Winter came and the tree slept. So you see the tree with its roots deep in its winter so there's no leaves on the tree. And we see the little girl in her apartment and then if I look above the picture of the little girl in the apartment, I see them, it looks like they're moving the tree on a truck. Let's see what's gonna happen to the tree. Thousands of volunteers and city workers dug through debris, day after day, month after month, at the tree's old home. It was known as Ground Zero. People all around the world lit candles and prayed for peace. Season after season, the tree grew. Each spring arrived with warm whispers and healing rain. The tree breathed while star-like flowers adorned its branches again. So you see time going by, you see the picture of the little girl in all the seasons. She's winter, she's making a snow angel. Spring with the flowers at her feet. Summer, she's playing with the hose. And in the fall, she's jumping over the pile of leaves and the tree is starting to be healthy again. Its scars are healing. Leaders planned memorials for those who lost their lives. Families went to baseball games and celebrated birthdays. In the summer, the tree revealed a dense canopy of leaves. Birds built nests. The tree grew taller, smooth bark emerging from the rough. So you see the family with their fire department t-shirts. Workers constructed a museum and planted new trees in rows like soldiers. People hung American flags and marched in parades. Cool autumn air brought other changes for the tree. Colors of sunsets gilded the tree's leaves. Bronze leaves like flames fell. So you see they're building the 9-11 memorial and all those trees around where the buildings once stood. Children chased fireflies and attended first days of school. A decade had passed. It was, a, it was time for the tree to go back home. So a decade is 10 years. So the tree is, they dug it up from where it was living and it's time to go back to the memorial 10 years after this had happened. 
Bright sun streamed down onto busy New York City streets. People stood shoulder to shoulder in the warmth, holding hands and remembering. Tears rained down, down, voices sang loud and strong. The tree reached its branches toward the light. Growing stronger every day. So there is the tree at the memorial site. So this happened at 10 years after 9-11 in 2001. 10 years would have been 2011, and now we're at 2021. So that's 20 years. And it says, a note from the author. On September 11, 2001, I was preparing my three-year-old for her first day of preschool. Images of towers falling flooded the TV screen before we left the ho our house in New Jersey. Many young children like my daughter and the girl in the story knew nothing about the tragic event when it happened because their parents protected them. The skies were silent because all air travel was prohibited. It was a day of overwhelming sadness. Much like the survivor tree, those of us who remember that day were witnesses to history. Years later, my children's homework assignments required them to interview me as someone who remembered the events of that terrible day. Like the child in the story, my daughter was in middle school when the tree was replanted at ground zero. I found it incredibly difficult to relive the images and my feelings of that day. I wish I had known the hopeful story of the survivor tree then. Hope let light in.